Wow, I do think I'm part of the coolest panel at this conference, really. I mean, that's amazing. Nancy, these photographs are amazing. Um, and Camilla and Mo Monica, you guys are so inspiring. Um, Feliciano, I thank you so much for your openness because having just made a film in Egypt over the past three years, I think the most difficult thing for everybody that's been involved in what's happened in Egypt as activists has been sort of threats on the family. And that's really the hardest thing to deal with. And each one of the characters in, in our film has been dealing with that. So your openness was very moving. And Naif, I went to kindergarten with Naif. So I'm just proud to know him. I mean, he is changing our world. And I don't know, it was the water we were drinking in kindergarten or something, but we went to kindergarten in, in, in Kuwait together. And um, I'm just very proud to know him. Um, so, The Square, we made a film, uh, I made a film with a collaboration of incredible filmmakers that I met in The Square about three years ago. Um, I grew up in uh, about 10 minutes away from Tahrir, so when things were exploding in Egypt, I wanted to be in the middle of it all. Um, I joined the protests and started to do the only thing I know how to do, which was film what was happening around me, and I started to look for characters that could really take me emotionally through the story and once the film would be finished, create empathy among people to really understand what it felt like to be in the middle of that uprising and, and that revolution. Ahmed was one of the first people I met. Um, he set up one of the first tents in Tahrir, and um, he uh, became the narrator of the story. And to lead you in, I'll just show you. Thank you. ولما نزلت الشارع لقيت كل اللي حواليا ما يقولوش عني اي حاجة كلهم زي حاولوا يفرقونا باي شكل وباي طريقة الشعب غضب وكفر الخوف خاف على نار مش خاف على نفسي انا خاف عليك انت خاف عليك انت من اللي جاي والدنيا كلها نزلت انزل ولا حتى الناس دي اللي, اللي نايمه في الخرا عشان نفسك وعشان عيالك وعشان اهلك وعشان تعرف تعيش أتوجه بحديث اليوم لشباب مصر بميدان التحرير أتوجه إليكم جميعا بحديث من القلب حديث الأب لأبنائه وبناته إنني أعتز بكم رمزا لجيل مصري جديد يدعو إلى التغيير إلى الأفضل ويتمسك به إن مصر تجتاز أوقاتا صعبة وينتهي بمصر الأمر لأوضاع يصبح معها الشباب الذين دعوا إلى التغيير والإصلاح أول المتضررين منها in the middle of that, of that square and found this incredible energy around me. Men, women, all different classes, religious, secular, people dreaming of a different future. Doctors were helping the injured, singers sang to encourage the protesters, and everybody was doing what they could do to transform the square into the utopia that they wanted all of Egypt to be, this example. And around us, we could hear everybody saying, we will no longer live in the story that's been written for us. We demand to be the authors of our own story and our own future. And you as an audience, the global audience, all over the world, your witness of what was happening in that square turned our efforts into a lonely local fight, from a lonely local fight into a, a global struggle. 
So this is Ahmed celebrating as Mubarak was stepping down. I kept filming him because to me he represented the hope um, of, of Egypt, um, the youth full of talent um, and desire for change. And he is one of Egypt's... Ahmed is one of the authors of Egypt's future, and he continues to struggle today. I fell in love with his beautiful spirit, his optimism. And what happened in that square was magical. Um, but the next three years saw a lot of violence. The army came to power, the brotherhood came to power, and we filmed through the highs and lows of this transitional period of the last three years. We filmed as our cast of characters refused this choice that the leadership could only be between this binary, between the military on the one side and the brotherhood on the other side. They wanted something different. They were refusing that this story that had been written for them for so long was the only choice that they could have. But three years later, what now? When you read the news, it seems like the revolution has failed. We have lost dear friends. I currently have many more friends in jail. And people ask us, you know, when will Egypt have this Western-style democracy? And it's been a very long, difficult road. But we have to keep remembering that we are on year three. And in the US, for example, it took 20 years to get from revolution to constitution. And it's a fairy tale to expect that this drastic change can happen in a mere three years. But what we can count on, and where the hope is, is that change has always happened and will happen with the commitment of a dedicated few that are continuing to struggle today. And these are the people that we can't give up on. Margaret Mead once said, never believe that a few caring people can't change the world, for indeed, that's the only thing that ever has. And that's what I have learned, truly learned, time and time again to be true over the past three years. It's watching this tireless commitment of the dedicated few that we've followed that has been truly inspiring to me, this relentlessness, this refusal to give up. And what long-form film can do is show the reality of this road to change. Because we usually see sort of the greatest hits of change. We see Martin Luther King say, I have a dream. We see Nelson Mandela end apartheid. But we don't spend with him the years and years of in prison. That's boring. You know, we don't watch that. But change is a process, and rights are fought for. They're never given to you. And this is the reality that we must recognize and embrace and have the patience for. And this is where I see artists on the street giving us hope. The success or failure of the revolution cannot be determined only by the most recent political outcomes. And if I've learned anything, democracy is a journey, not a destination. And the everyday hope that I see is in the streets, with a younger generation that refuses to be silenced, a younger generation that is 70% of the population. 70, approximately 70% of the population is under the age of 35, and they are still refusing to have their story written for them. Now, the truth may not always be shown on television, but it's being painted on the walls. And if those walls are whitewashed, it's being uploaded online. And if that video is deleted, it's being tweeted around the world. And when an injustice is done, it is filmed and uploaded. When an innocent person is hurt or killed, their memory is honored across downtown walls. This is Ammar, a graffiti artist who's in our film. He became known internationally because he refused to stop painting as the tear gas and bullets flew. Um, and he's actually the person that narrates the story of, of, of the revolution through our film, through paintings on a mural. Um, he became known because you know, journalists would come up to him and say, how do you keep painting through the tear gas that keeps flying? And visitors and international journalists would come to him and applaud him and say, wow, this is amazing. Egyptians are painting and expressing themselves on walls for the very first time. And he would joke with them and say, well, you know, we have been painting on walls for 5,000 years. But yes, we are expressing ourselves. And yes, our voices will be heard. And every day, people like Ahmed and Ammar are saying that they will continue to write and imagine and dream the story of our future. 
And that, the previous slide actually was when the film was released by Netflix, you know, it was very cool to see, you know, the, the, what the graffiti from the downtown walls of Luxor and Cairo be, you know, in billboards in LA, which was kind of great. Um, so, uh, you know, there may not be one leader yet that has come out of the revolution, but as Ahmed says, this is bigger than one leader. He says, we are looking for a conscience, and I'll just play you one of the last parts of the film. فنحن ما بندورش على قيادة على قد ما احنا بندور على ضمير. بس القائد ده هو ايه قائد يعني ايه قائد يعني؟ يعني يجي يعمل لي يجيب لي حلول نازلة من السماء يعني؟ مش هيحل لي مش هيجيب لي حلول نازلة من السماء. كل ما في الموضوع ان احنا لو قدرنا نخلق الضمير ده في وسط المجتمع احنا هنجيب حد كويس. احنا ما بندورش على قائد يحكمنا. لأن كل واحد نزل ميدان التحرير هو بيتمتع بالقيادة احنا بندور على قمير The Square has been released in over 50 countries on Netflix and Ahmed's words we're looking for a conscience has been tweeted into dozens of different languages at hashtag the square the square has been now seen by millions. Um, we were nominated for an Oscar uh, about a month, a couple months ago. We didn't win, but again, the Cairo streets wrote their own story, and they gave us the Oscar of the Cairo streets, and that was the best one we could have possibly imagined. <laughs> um, thank you. A new story is being written in our increasingly borderless world as protesters are translating the film themselves and showing it themselves in, Ky in Kiev, Caracas, Moscow, and in other squares, uh, Maidans, plazas, and piazzas around the world. People are using this film as a basis for discussion. It's not that we want everybody to become Egypt activists, but they're using the film as a basis for discussion to talk about how to deal with change they want to see in their own communities. And we're now working with a fantastic company called Participant, one of Jeff Skoll's um, film companies. Um, who are, they're doing the social action. They're doing the social, it's a wonderful company. They're doing the social action part of, of um, the release of our film, which means releasing it in universities and squares around the world. Um, and we've also partnered with a very cool um, guy named Stuart Farmer who does bicycle cinema, where our projector is powered by the bicycle. So it's a way to show the film in squares around the world where you can't easily get it hooked up to power. So that's kind of how it's being shown in squares around the world right now. So anybody that wants to talk to us about this and for, to help bring it to your square, you know, please let us know. Um, and this is bicycle cinema that is being now used um, in, in Kiev as well currently. Um, there's a picture um, which shows it where about a million people have now watched the film and, 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 uh, and downloaded it. Maybe it was a previous picture. But what I found with the release of this film is that truth and courage are contagious. So catch them while you can. Um, and come talk to me about releasing films around the world and causing social action. Thank you. Thank you.